Oh, there you are. No. Oh, hello, law students. Uh, my name's Matt McLean, and I'm the mental health strategist that works out of UMB Counseling Services. Uh, first of all, welcome to my home. Um, I'm glad to have this opportunity to talk to you a little bit uh, about mental health and the year ahead. Um, you know, the information that, uh, that I like to share with uh, all incoming students is based on many, many conversations, uh, getting to know a whole lot of students uh, really in depth and talking with them about what their experience was coming into their, their program, uh, both undergraduate, graduate students and students into the law program like yourself. And through all these different conversations, uh, I've learned a few interesting things. Uh, the, the thing that I, I like to talk about the most is that, you know, everyone kind of shares all of the same uh, worries and concerns uh, when coming into to a new program. Uh, they worry about meeting people and, and making friends and whether, whether they will fit in or, or enjoy the program. And they also worry about whether or not they'll be able to meet the academic demands and expectations of their program. So everyone kind of has those worries. The other thing that uh, most people think or, or commonly think is that they are the only person that is having those worries uh, or those issues. And when you take those things together with the fact that, yeah, it probably at first is going to be kind of difficult to meet people, make connections. Uh, you're potentially not going to be getting grades that you're happy with initially or, or grades that you're used to getting. And all of that put together tends to make people think like maybe they don't belong, maybe they can't make it, and they tend to look at all their peers and think that they're doing much better than they are. And, you know, when you start to feel like that, you know, you start to question whether you, whether you can do the program, you start to question whether you should even try at all. Um, but, you know, th this is this is your common, normal uh, concerns and experiences for, for everyone. Uh, you know, what you need to do this year, like, like any other year, is, is be kind and considerate to, to yourself in terms of being able to uh, manage these these new expectations, this this new environment. Uh, don't uh, interpret uh, grades that are initially lower than you're getting used to uh, as, as confirmation of, of some worry that you have that you're not going to be able to make it. You will, over time, figure it out. Uh, I really believe that, that uh, we all have an incredible capacity for resilience and growth. Usually the thing that gets in the way is where we just start to tell ourselves a story that we're not going to be able to make it. And so when we get those, again, those grades maybe that you're not happy with, instead of thinking like, okay, you know, maybe I should uh, just take a look at what my process was. I should talk to my professor. Uh, you know, that's, that's the right approach, you know, is, is learn what you can from that experience so that you can grow and, and do better, better as you move along. Uh, instead of, of thinking as this is confirmation of, of your inability. It's not that. And, uh, you know, this year, I, I believe we should extend uh, even more so that, that kindness, that compassion to, to other people. Uh, you know, we're all figuring this, this out uh, as we go along, uh, this new modality of, of being able to, to deliver an educational experience. Uh, we're all doing it together. So I, I think this means that, you know, we should expect some, some flexibility as, as because everyone's uh, environment is really different. You know, some, one of the kind of interesting, potentially good things that's come out of something like this is we've gotten a window into other people's lives. You know, right now you're getting a window into mine. You know, why is that bookshelf so messy? You might be asking yourself. And I, I think I reorganized it recently. But, uh, uh, you know, getting this, this view in other people's lives, we learn that other people's experience, other people's environments are, are potentially very different from our own. And they may be experiencing challenges and, and concerns that we can't fathom. Uh, and so, so I think that understanding goes a long way and, and we should be extending that compassion to ourselves. Like I've been saying, I'm going to tell you one of those is a lot easier than the other. It's, it's a lot easier to forgive other people for things that we will beat ourselves up over. Um, but you, you know, you should be thinking too about, you know, how you, you talk to yourself and how you talk about yourself in your own head. 
You know, we, we really do have a relationship with our, ourselves. We're not this unitary, solitary construct. You know, we're really just a, a mishmash of a bunch of different parts that create this illusion of a, of a consciousness. Uh, but that, that conversation that you have uh, with yourself and, and how you interpret your, your experience is, is really important. So pay attention to how you're talking about yourself, how you're choosing the story that you're choosing to tell yourself. Uh, about yourself and your own experience. Um, you know, uh, it's going to be this year one of the big challenges, I think, for for our health is the fact that we, we do everything from home now. You know, we, we work, we live, we play uh, from home. And, and that can be really challenging because how do you know when you're done the day's work? How do you know when you can leave school behind? And it's it's going to be really important at times to leave school behind. You don't want to be spending every waking minute consumed by legal education. You know, maybe a good portion, but not all of your day. Uh, you know, you can find all sorts of, of great tips for being able to, to manage working remotely or, or studying from home. Uh, one tip, one thing that I use is, you know, I, I establish my, my, for myself a set number of, uh, of priority goals for the day. And then once I've, I've accomplished those goals, I can very happily, I can guilt-free say, I'm done work for the day. Do these check. Wait, this video is the last thing that I have to do today. Once I put the check mark on this, it's time to, uh, time to relax. Um, and, you know, so you might want to consider like that or, or something like that uh, for yourself. Um, I think too, you know, the, sometimes the work ahead can seem insurmountable, can seem daunting, uh, hard to start. And so that's where it can be really important to, to break things down into much more manageable chunks. And, and that's important to do because, you know, we can train our, our brain. And one of the ways that we can train our brain when we break things down into manageable chunks is when we achieve those chunks, well, then we feel good and those good feelings they build uh, and, and grow that tendency to want to continue on with the work you know you're viewing the work in a much more positive way you're telling yourself that you you can put the time in and you can get things done um, so that's just kind of a collection of, of different ideas that uh, potentially you'll find uh, useful in, in the year ahead um, two last things that I, that I want to talk uh, about, you know, one is, is your experience that you may have, good or bad, is, is I think we, we should all learn to, to accept whatever our experience is. Sometimes we tend to think that when we're feeling really stressed out, when we're feeling overwhelmed or, or sad or, or worried about something, that somehow that indicates some kind of a failure on our part. But uh, in, in nearly all cases, those, those feelings, are, are, they make sense. They correspond to something going on in your life, your world. And a, a better way to interpret those, those feelings, those sensations, like, like the sensation of, of stress, you know, the common uh, story and mythology around stress is that it's bad, debilitating. If you're experiencing stress, you're doing something wrong. You should be aiming for a stress-free living. But really, like a lot of uncomfortable things that, you know, our, our brain makes us experience, they actually do serve a purpose. So if you're experiencing, you know, stress and, and uncomfortable feelings, Really take the time to, to allow them to, to feel them, allow yourself to feel them, and, and to understand where they're coming from and maybe what they might be telling you in terms of what you, you might need to be doing in response to them. You know, for example, stress in response to some sort of very large assignment or test that's coming up. I mean, really, that's just your body's way of saying, hey, listen, there's something important coming and you need to get ready for it. Lastly, uh, I really encourage you to remember your why. Uh, not your YMCA, but your WHY. Uh, maybe many of you have this idea at the top of mind. Uh, maybe some of you need to think about it. But I, I really urge you to, to know why you're doing this. Why did you come to UNB Law? What does this mean for you? What do you hope to accomplish? What's the vision for yourself uh, in the future? And how does this relate to that? Because you know, ahead of you is a whole lot of hard work. I mean, there's no question. It's going to be long hours, late nights, early mornings. Uh, but you, if you hold that uh, against what you want to accomplish, it can be your beacon. It can be the light, the thing that, that propels you as you go through, right? Because everything, everything worthwhile, it comes with challenge and work. So, so take that why Write it down on a sticky note, put it somewhere where you can see it all the time, uh, and allow that to, to propel you. 
Uh, I think that's about everything I have to say, uh, other than best of luck uh, in the year ahead. Oh, wait, I should tell you about counseling services uh, at UMB. Uh, you can you can find our services on our website. I'll, I'll put a, a URL uh, to that, maybe, maybe in this space right here during the editing process. Um, and you can go there. There's a form to fill out to, to access our services. Uh, I really encourage you to, to seek out um, uh, counseling or other psychological help. Um, and I, you know, the barrier for seeking that help should be should be low. Don't feel like you need to to seek out that support when you're totally overwhelmed at wit's end. You know, if you feel like you're starting to make choices you're not really happy with, if you feel like things aren't really going in a direction uh, that you like, you know, that's a time to to seek out counseling services, uh, get some counseling at that point, uh, rather than when things have gotten really really bad. Again, thank you. This video is almost 11 minutes, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to, to speak to you. Uh, again, best of luck. Take care.